All right, today we're going to talk about some more about genetics, but our focus is going to be on Punnett squares <clears throat> and understanding essentially how Punnett squares are used. So some of our objectives for today are going to be to understand some of the basic terms used in genetics, um, definitely understand how to use a monohybrid Punnett square to predict some outcomes, and we'll talk more about what monohybrid really means, and then comparing and contrasting genotypes and phenotypes and those are two of your vocabulary words um, that you will find on Quizlet but just definitely understanding how to compare and contrast genotypes and phenotypes. Now if at any time throughout this presentation you feel like you need to pause it uh, to make sure that you understand and to take some notes please make sure that you do so and then continue once you get a better understanding. All right. So. Genetics and Punnett squares, why do we even bother with it? How does it help us? How can we use it in everyday life? How does it apply to our life? Uh, why do we even care? So if you look at this family, um, this is a picture of a family, and, and the title says all in the genes, and we know genes are specific pieces of information on the, GNA, on the DNA sorry, that um, relates to a specific trait. So hair color, eye color, hitchhiker's thumb, we have genes that gives us those traits. Now, if we look at this family, um, we can kind of tell that they might be all related. We might not be sure. So, that you know, you, if you analyze the picture, you can probably figure out if they're related or not and come up with some assumptions and um, some, some information about this picture. So what I want you to do now is go ahead and pause the video and go ahead and answer these three questions. Uh, question number one, do children ever look exactly the same? and when. Uh, question number two, how are members of this family in the picture different and how might they be the same? And question number three, why can we look at a set of parents? How can looking at parents help us predict what children, the children of those parents might look like? So go ahead and pause the video and answer those questions on a sheet of paper. Okay, so once you're finished with this, um, we're going to move on a little bit and talk more about genetics and uh, Punnett squares. We're going to talk about some terms that you should know and some terms that you should be familiar with. So alleles are one of those terms. Alleles is what we use different forms of a trait that a gene might have. And kind of how alleles work, we always use the first letter of the dominant trait. So if you look at this example, you see uppercase T and lowercase T. These are two different alleles. So let's say we were talking about plants. Some plants are tall, some plants are short. And if we found that the tall gene, the gene for the tall plant, let's say that gene was the dominant gene or the gene that takes over the most, we use the first letter of the dominant gene to create our allele. So we'll use the first letter, if tall plants are dominant, we'll use T to stand for tall. So this uppercase T represents tall plants and the lowercase T represents short plants. Now even though it represents short plants, we're not going to use S, we're still going to use T because that's the first letter of the dominant gene. Dominant gene is tall plants. So we're going to use the lowercase T to represent short plants, uppercase T to represent tall plants. Um, homozygous, another term that we need to know. Homozygous refers to two alleles that are the same. So for each trait, you're going to have two alleles. So for tall plants, you're going to have two alleles. And for short plants, you're going to have two alleles. So these two uppercase T's are going to represent tall plants because T, the uppercase T, is the dominant gene. So this is going to take over. And for short plants, we're going to need to have two lowercase t's. And that's the only way that we can get a short plant, because we have the two lowercase t's together. That means it represents the not dominant trait, or what we call the recessive trait. All right? Homo meaning same, so that's why we have to have the same type of allele for both of these traits. All right? Heterozygous, hetero meaning different. Hetero is going to mean that you have two different alleles for a particular trait. So this uppercase T and lowercase T mixed together, this is a heterozygous allele. But this still will represent a tall plant because we have this dominant allele in here. 
the tall plants are dominant, so they're going to take over. So once you have at least one allele for the dominant trait, that's going to mean that tall plants, that, that trait is going to show up. Let's just say we were talking about green plants and red plants, so green flowers and red flowers, um, and the green was the dominant trait, then this will represent um, a green plant because you'll have two, an uh, uppercase G and a lowercase G because it's heterozygous. And uh, because this uppercase dominant trait is here, that means that this plant would be green. In order for us to have a red plant, I would need two lowercase g's right here for it to be a red plant. Some more terms that we need to know. Hybrid. Now, if you notice, hybrid looks just like heterozygous. It means the same thing. Different. If you think of hybrid cars, they're half gas and half electric. You know, So they're using two different sources to power the car. Um, same thing here. Hybrid, same as hetero heterozygous. We have two different traits. Looks exactly the same. Dominant, like I said before, dominant is a trait that takes over or a trait that covers up the other form of the trait. And the dominant is always represented by the uppercase letter. Recessive is the trait that's not so powerful or the trait that gets dominated or the trait that get covers, gets covered up by the dominant trait. And we use the lowercase letters to represent the recessive traits. So if you see a lowercase letter, it's going to represent that recessive trait. And again, if we're talking tall and short plants, we're not going to use S for short. We're going to use lowercase t because we have to use the first letter of the dominant trait. And the dominant trait is tall, so we're going to use t. All right. A couple more terms. Phenotype. So a phenotype is the physical appearance of an organism or what it looks like. Is it actually tall? Is it short? Do you see a green plant? Do you see a red plant? Do you see wrinkled seeds? Do you see smooth seeds? So actually what it looks like is the phenotype. Is your hair brown? Do you have blue eyes? Like what does it actually look like? Is your hair curly? Is it straight? Is it wavy? Those are all phenotypes. Um, you could look at uh, anything and come up with phenotypes of different things. Tall, short, fat, um, curly hair, straight hair, dark skin, light skin, freckles, no freckles. Those are all phenotypes. The genotype, next term, is the actual genes or the actual alleles that respond to that phenotype. So what is the gene order? Is it homozygous dominant? So we have two uppercase T's, so they're the same thing. Um, and they're the dominant traits. So both of these is kind of what we call homozygous dominant, same allele, and they're both dominant allele. Is it a heterozygous genotype or a hybrid genotype? Meaning we have two different alleles, heterozygous and hybrid, same thing, two different alleles. And then these two, they're recessive. They have the lowercase allele and they're the same thing. So homozygous um, recessive. And technically, you can only have homozygous recessive um, because if it were mixed, then it would be hybrid or heterozygous, right? So homozygous recessive. And then uh, in genetics, we're going to get into some math things as far as ratios and percentages. So how many tall versus short plants are we going to have? So out of four, the ratio to tall to short might be three to one. Or the ratio might be 2 to 2, 50% tall, 50% short. You know, So you might have different ratios as we talk about uh, different outcomes and different possibilities. And those are basically some of the main terms that you need to know. Now, tools that you need to know, and this is where the Punnett square comes in. The Punnett square is basically a tool that we use to predict possible genotypes um, and phenotypes of the offspring of two known parents. And you can also do it backwards where you have the kids and one parent and you figure out the genotype and phenotype uh, of that parent, the other parent that could have produced those kids. So it's just a tool. It uh, looks like a box cut into four sections and we put the genotypes in outside and the inside of the boxes. And if you look here, you'll see that the parents' genotypes go on the outside, top and bottom, top and side, sorry of the box. So it's a box, two rows, two columns, and we use it to figure out um, and predict genotypes. So 
how do we use a Punnett square and what are the practical applications of this Punnett square? How do we set it up? Um, so we have these two cute pugs here. And let's create a scenario and try to figure out how we use this Punnett square. So let's just say the alleles of the particular species of pug can be either brown or black. So the phenotypes, we have the brown phenotype over here and we have the black phenotype. Now if we're looking at this, um, with brown being the uppercase B, that means that brown is the dominant phenotype and black is the recessive phenotype. Again, th in this case it doesn't matter because both brown and black start with the same letter, so it makes it easy. But just remember that brown is the dominant, black is going to be the recessive, right? So if we set it up like that with brown being the dominant phenotype, what are the possible genotypes that can give me this brown dog? Remember, once the uppercase B is there, brown is going to be the phenotype that shows up. So I can have homozygous dominant, meaning two uppercase Bs. As long as I have one uppercase B, it's going to be brown. So definitely if I have two uppercase Bs, I'm going to have that brown or that dominant phenotype. Or I can have a heterozygous genotype, one uppercase, one lowercase, and this dog will still be brown because, again, as long as I have one dominant allele, this, this genotype is going to give me a brown phenotype. Remember, the phenotype is what it looks like. Genotype are what letters or what alleles are lining up. Now, for the black, what are the possible genotypes for this black dog? Only one option has to be homozygous recessive because I have to have two of the lowercase b's to get this black. Remember, the black allele is recessive, so I need both of them to, in order for me to get this black phenotype. So a pundit spirit is going to do is going to help me figure out what's gonna, what kind of offspring is going to be produced if I cross a brown dog with a black dog. So, and we're going to cross the, the homozygous dominant with the homozygous recessive and see what we come up with, right? So how to use a monohybrid Punnett square. And again, this was one of our, our terminologies. Monohybrid means that this Punnett square is only going to show me one trait. The only trait that we're concerned with in this situation is the color, right? The phenotype color. Is it going to be brown or is it going to be black? So I'm using this Punnett square to show me one trait. So we're going to cross homozygous dominant homozygous with homozygous recessive. Now it says the parent alleles go on the outside of the square. So this is kind of how we set it up. We put one allele per row or per column, sorry, and then on the side we put another allele per row. So the parent traits go on the outside. So we're crossing homozygous dominant with homozygous recessive and the alleles go on the top and on the side of the Punnett square. What's the next thing that I want to do? <clears throat> I want to drop the letters from the top into each square. So these are the alleles that are on the top and I'm going to put them into each square. So first one, B comes down and it goes into this square. And then this B comes down and it goes into this square. Then we have this B that comes down and goes into that square. And this B that comes down and goes into that square. Some people like to say that this is similar to the FOIL method in math, um, but this is how we use the Punnett squares. So next step that we're going to do is we're going to move the letters on the side into each corresponding square as well. So this B comes over here, and then this allele comes into this next square. Then we bring this allele into this square, and this allele into this square. So notice they come into the corresponding squares for the rows that they're lined up in. Now, one tip that you want to do, the order that you put the alleles in, in the squares, it really doesn't matter, but a good practice to start doing is always putting the uppercase letter first. So even if I brought in my lowercases first, and then I brought in my uppercases, I would put the uppercase allele in front of the lowercase allele. It just helps. It goes a long way to when Punnett squares start to become a little bit more complex. All right. So we filled our Punnett square and we can see that we have alleles or genotypes 
in each square. Each square will represent one possibility of the genotype, right? So what do these results really show us? So it shows me if, remember, B is the uppercase B, dominant allele is going to be brown, and the lowercase b is going to stand for recessive or black. Now in this square, I have a heterozygous um, trait, heterozygous, heterozygous, and heterozygous. So they're all, now I can make some predictions based on these squares, and my results will show me that as far as phenotypes go, these are all brown, because remember, once I have a dominant B, it's going to be, or a dominant allele, it's going to be brown. So all these possibilities, out of the four possibilities, all of them are going to be brown. So phenotype, I have 100% brown. And then if I'm talking genotype, if I'm talking ratios, still phenotype, sorry, and I'm talking ratios, out of four possibilities, I have four brown. So brown to black ratio. For every four brown, I'm going to have zero black. So I have four browns, no blacks. That's phenotypes. If I'm talking genotypes, I have 100% heterozygous or hybrids. And then ratios, I have four to zero. All of them are heterozygous or hybrid uh, phenotype, genotypes. Sorry. So this is basically how you, we use a Punnett square. Um, if you're confused, go back and watch it again because you're going to have some practice problems on how to set up and create Punnett squares. Again, our basic objectives today were to understand some of the terminologies used in, in genetics. So we talked about heterozygous and homozygous, um, dominant and recessive traits, talked about alleles, talked about hybrid and what those stand for. Um, another objective was to how to use a monohybrid Punnett square to predict some results. And remember, monohybrid means you're only concerned with one trait in that Punnett square. So either you're concerned with color or height or size, only one trait. And then compare and contrast genotypes and phenotypes. Remember, genotypes are the actual alleles or the letters that are used to represent um, those genes. And phenotypes are how they look. Are they brown? Are they tall? Are they short? Are they wrinkled? Are they smooth? All right. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. Um, review this PowerPoint as many times or this presentation as many times as you need to get that concept and then work on some of those practice problems and we'll talk about them in class.